I'm sure you've heard of the stupid Seven Deadly Sins Spongebob theory. Spongebob is lust, Patrick is sloth, Squidward is wrath, Sandy is pride, Mr. Krabs is greed, Plankton is envy, and of course, Gary is gluttony. Even though this theory is just as dumb as some of the other notable Spongebob theories, such as crab burgers being Krabby Patties, characters being addicted to drugs, nuclear bombing leading to mutations, and famously the show is a metaphor for World War II Germany. Wait, what? Who thinks of this? Squidward being a failed artist and wanting to get rid of his neighbors. Mr. Krabs represents Europe looking down upon Germany for their atrocious acts and overall tyranny. What does that make Spongebob or Mrs. Puff? The Soviets? Oh. My. Sorry, I uh, got off on a tangent there. We can agree, though, that these theories are stupid, right? Not you. The low-hanging fruit of a Seven Deadly Sins theory exists for every show or media, and it shoves characters into loose filling roles. Case in point, our boy, Gary Wilson Jr., the snail, as gluttony. Yeah, he eats somewhat, but I've also seen people swap him out with Puff Mama or switch Spongebob with Pearl as lust. I'm tired of hearing this theory, and if you clicked on this video, you probably are too. So let's check out if Geary really does fit gluttony, and when he doesn't, I can finally sleep peacefully at night, knowing this garbage theory falls short. First major case of Geary being involved with food. Season 1, Opposite Day. Squid convinces Sponge and Pat that it's Opposite Day, and in a montage, Geary is shown eating from a table. Nothing too notable here, honestly, besides the question of how he is using the napkin or silverware, but eh. Also, we immediately see Spongebob eat out of his food bowl. Ew. Next, Season 1, I was a Teenage Gary. Oh boy, first shot of the episode. Exercise time is over, Gary. We don't want you getting too thin. Off to a great start. So Sponge and Pat are leaving for a jellyfishing competition and leave Squid in charge of Gary. Squid's gonna have to walk him two times a day and feed him two absolutely huge cans of snail food per day! Of course, Squid isn't going to do this and leads to this heartbreaking shot that made me pretty sad as a kid. Three days pass and Gary is starving. To be fair, Squid didn't eat anything for three days either though, but... Gary gets a mountain of food but refuses to eat it due to a hunger strike. Now he needs a shot of snail plasma for some reason. Thankfully, Gary's fasting still allows him to drink water, which cures him of his ailments. Spongebob offers a meal to which Gary obviously wants. Is Gary gluttony? So far, no. Thankfully, just abused. Also, stop claiming there's a deleted scene where Squid turns into a snail. It's not re- Season 1, Sleep Time. Spongebob is invading dreams and rigging mob boats when he enters Gary's. We see a beautiful library of timeless classics, such as Of Snails and Men, or a poem by Emily Dickinson. Wait, so Steinbeck has changed in the Spongebob world, but Dickinson isn't. Uh, never mind. Gary then reads us a specific quote. There once was a man from Peru who dreamed he was eating his shoe. He awoke with a fright in the middle of the night to find that his dream had come true. Hmm, eating shoes? And Gary was shown earlier looking inside Spongebob shoes. Nah, too much of a stretch. Still nowhere near close to gluttony. Season 1, Rock Bottom. Spongebob notes that while trapped in Detroit, he needs to feed Gary. That's it. Season 1, Fools in April. Spongebob tells Gary no more food and that he must eat salted, mashed up clam shells. Gary appropriately cries at this. So far this theory investigation is turning into an abuse case. On to season 2. Season 2, Something Smells. Spongebob makes a disgusting sundae. After finding his peanut jar empty, Spongebob says, Gary! Our peanuts jar is totally empty! <laughs> While it may seem like it, I again claim Gary is just being abused. Look at his saddened expression after Spongebob realizes what has happened to his peanuts. Fear, paranoia, and a complete worry for his life appear in Gary's eyes. He knows after these 11 minutes, he will suffer for his actions. Poor guy. Also, it is important to note Gary does have taste and values, as he refuses to eat the Sunday Spongebob made and later dies from Spongebob's haltosis. Season 2, Dying for Pie, Squidnator gives Sponge a bomb pie. 
After demanding an explanation for why the eldritch being shaped like a sponge didn't die, Squidnator tells Sponge to explode. He then lashes out with... Honestly, with the way this is going, I'm starting to think Spongebob might be Wrath instead. That's what, Strike 4? No wonder Gary later tries to run away. Season 2. Dumped. Eh, I was thinking of a later episode, but okay. Pat invites Gary over to a sleepover and quickly becomes Gary's new best friend. We get a lot to unpack in this one. First off, Patrick mentions popcorn while talking about hangout activities, likely enticing Gary with the thought of actual nutrition for once. Gary even injures himself chasing after Pat. Spongebob tries to reel him back in with snail nip, but not even that works. He then attempts to trick Gary into a life or death choice, but Gary ignores it. Gary stays with Pat while Spongebob references supposedly feeding him, keeping him company and helping him. At this point, I honestly don't believe it. Spongebob gets multiple new pets, notably Larry, another snail. He tries feeding him hot snail food, but Larry hates it. Spongebob appeals to Gary with free litter box access and a sexy wood carving of Mr. Tennis Balls, but takes special note of one option. And you don't have to wait around for me to feed you anymore! 24 hour fridge access! And you don't have to wait around for me to feed you anymore? Huh. With how much he seems to forget and the apparent claim Gary can't open the fridge, I think we nearly have enough evidence to sue this awful sponge for mistreatment of an animal. A few episodes earlier and Gary takes a bath, Spongebob even floods his house hunting for Gary just to take a bath. Imagine what dinner time is like. Sponge and Pat discover Gary only wanted Patrick for a cookie in his shorts, and after eating it, he succumbs to Stockholm Syndrome and crawls back to Spongebob, likely hoping he can take advantage of the free fridge deal. Season 2, Procrastination. This episode always creeped me out as a kid. Something just about the feel of it. Almost like it had a negative emotional aura to it. Spongebob, just like myself with this script, suffers from procrastination for his 800 word essay. Gary shows up saying he isn't hungry. Spongebob decides to feed him anyways. He gives a mountain of food to Gary who swiftly devours the whole thing. Sponge then offers a creme brulee or a choco flavored algae bits, mm, not bad, but is disgusted by Gary's mess and cleans it up. After suffering in a nightmare that freaked young me out a ton, Spongebob wakes up and completes his essay. One notable idea for this episode is that Spongebob fell asleep after his calisthenic and woke up after the nightmare, which means Gary might have only gotten fed in the dream. Who knows what really occurred? Add being a terrible pet owner to the what not to do at a stoplight essay. up season 2. Only 4 notable Gary and food occurrences. Still don't believe this theory at all. Season 3. Doing Time. While in whatever Groundhog's Day time loop Mrs. Puff is stuck in, Spongebob notes while being arrested that he is a snail to feed and that now is not a good time. Season 3. New Student Starfish. Spongebob wakes up at exactly 8am to go to boating school. During his morning routine, Gary makes toast for Spongebob. So now he has the ability to make food? Is there like a continuity I'm missing here? I really don't know at this point. Maybe Gary's eating is just like a season 1 and 2 thing. Season 3. Clams. Mm, never mind. Season 3. The Great Snail Race. Oh boy. We got some stuff to unpack. Spongebob wakes up and immediately harasses Gary. Great start. Spongebob enters him into the Great Snail Race after Squidward Tentpoles gets his own snail. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? No, no, no! Spongebob proceeds to train Gary in the most brutal way imaginable, through humiliation. I call you a lady to humiliate and demean you. It's a motivational tool we coaches use. Somehow this always went over my head as a kid. Spongebob uses some strongman powder that is 100% made by the same people who made anchor arms, but they call it kelp powder, for muscle mass. He also adds cliche raw eggs and literal nails to the protein shake for Gary to eat. We then see a training montage of poor Gary, who even has to speedrun eating. He is pushed to his absolute limit. Now it's time for the snail race. Snelly immediately gets a head start while Gary stalls. He is again pushed past his boundaries while we see what a good snail owner is supposed to do with Patrick and Rocky. Even the head announcer notes how awful Spongebob is. Gary, now out of control, falters the race, then dies. 
Let's get hashtag Spongebob is over party trending right now. Luckily Gary lives after he gets a snail GF and Rocky wins the race. I'm really starting to dislike Spongebob here guys. Season 3, I had an accident. Spongebob breaks his butt and becomes a hermit. He makes friends with Chip, Penny, and Yu's napkin, the original homies. While he goes to save his friends from the gorilla that I'm 90% sure was created while someone was high, he tells Chip to take good care of Gary. Chip is promptly eaten. Side note, while the gorilla is casually murdering Patrick and Sandy, Squidward is just watering his plants, either oblivious or ignorant of the incredible threat 10 feet away from him. Maybe the latter part of the episode is just a hallucination by Spongebob. Who knows? I only hope the seven mile spanking machine is real. This whole episode is a fever dream, man. Season 3, Krabby Land. Ah, Krabby Land. What a classic. We start with Spongebob crediting Gary for high quality French toast. Guess there's a growth in his character. Could I still count this as gluttony since now he can make food for himself? And eh, gonna. Season 3, Missing Identity. In one of my favorite openings to an episode, we see Spongebob recount his past day of losing his ID. Spongebob goes to feed Gary with a banger song. He specifically notes he feeds Gary snail po for years and hasn't tasted it. He tries it and is disgusted. The snail po world headquarters even notes the disturbance, implying they have some unknown devious plan. They trying to overtake snail kind? I don't, I don't really care at this point. We see Squid reading Fancy Living Digest, which is a nice little nod to chocolate and nuts. Spongebob eats snail po a few more times, not much else to this one. And honestly, that's actually it for season 3. A lot more Gary than I was expecting. Let's see about season 4, can't be too bad, right? Season 4, have you seen this snail? Oh, Neptune. This is probably the most important episode for the entire series. Let's dive in. We open on Spongebob carrying a heavy bag of snail food for Gary. He gets an official Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy paddle ball set, but forgets about Gary's food outside. He accepts the Dirty Bubble Challenge as he must hit the paddle 29,998,559,671,349 times in a row. Whew. Gary goes to eat lunch, but is startled to discover he has no food. We see his internal clock noting it is lunchtime with a nice callback to your shoes untied as well. Probably. Gary gets repeatedly ignored and runs away. Pat comes in to check on Spongebob and discovers his friend has only focused on the Dirty Bubble Challenge. Pat reveals he won the challenge, but lost the trophy. That's kinda cool. Sponge quickly discovers he was out for a week and drives Gary away. We cut to Gary, who finds some dangerous looking snails and runs away, not knowing they're actually pretty friendly and are willing to offer him nachos. That's nice. He then encounters the most evil character in the franchise. Gary gets spoiled by grandma and even gets his own room. We also get to see an accurate portrayal of old people on the road. Pat meets with grandma and Gary and stupidly ignores the snail he and Spongebob are looking for. With maybe how he was treated earlier, Pat might be trying to hinder Spongebob's ability to get Gary back. Or not, I, I don't really know. But either way, now we get a depressing banger. Gary keeps getting fed until we get the startling reveal. The old lady is fattening him up to eat him. He tries to flee and encounters the same gang of snails from earlier, and sacrifices one of them to Grandma to save his life. Gary has crossed the moral event horizon. He was going to give you nachos, and you kill him. Screw Spongebob is over party, let's get Gary is over party trending. Gary finds Spongebob again, episode ends. Definitely an impactful episode for this theory. Spongebob tries to redeem himself, but Gary straight up just kills another snail. Was not expecting this role reversal. And that's it for season 4. A single episode. There are some potential examples, but nothing directly relating to food. Now we move on to everyone's favorite period of the show, the so-called... <laughs> season 5. Fungus among- In one of my personal least favorite episodes ever, Spongebob tries to feed Gary some organic food for some reason. Gary instead eats some nice looking fungus on the floor and eventually leads to Spongebob spreading the fungus to the entire town. Mr. Krabs utilizes Gary in a capitalistic scheme in order to form a monopoly. Krabs charges an outrageous $5 price to ransack the common worker and deprive them of their basic fish rights. Sorry. Basically, Gary just eats the floor and biohazard material. What happened to this poor snail, man? Season 5. What happened to Spongebob? After everyone acts extremely out of character, Spongebob moves to Chicago and becomes the mayor. Throughout the episode, Gary is constantly afraid of Spongebob, such as hiding from him in the intro with not much context. 
SpongeBob also leaves him a year's supply of snail food. About three hours later, Patrick and Sandy visit and find Gary, who is consumed- OH MY GOD! GARY, WHAT THE fuck? Season 6, Pineapple Fever. I really hate this episode. Squidward gets trapped with Sponge and Pat in the form of Pineapple. Squidward goes to his room to try and escape this mediocre episode and also searches for snacks. He finds and eats some while making fun of Gary not getting any. Squidward then discovers he was eating snail food. That's it. That's all there is relating to Gary and food this episode. I sat through the full 11 minutes of this garbage episode for a 10 second joke. Can't wait to see what my sanity will look like by the end of this video. Ooh. Season 7, The Monster Who Came to Bikini Bottom. Patrick makes friends with some sea monster. I don't really know, I kind of just zoned out for most of this. Spongebob is feeding Gary with another different type of snail food. Then the monster throws Spongebob's house with Gary in it. Spongebob, somehow potentially showing actual care for his pet, tells him to jump and use his parachute, subtly implying Gary has so many incidents that he needs a parachute. Another point for the Gary abuse train. Yeah! Season 7. Trench Billies. Oh boy. Sponge and Pat wind up in Louisiana and have to figure out how to get home. They then battle a family in the best way. Sponge later makes a comment about needing to get home to feed Gary. That's it. One of the family members references Shakespeare, which makes me unfathomably angry thanks to English classes and poetry. Thanks for the scathing and critique on my Macbeth paper, Mrs. R. Really makes me so excited to learn, Mrs. R! Season 7, Shellback Shenanigans. I do not remember this episode at all. This is starting to turn honestly more into a retrospective rather than the Gary theory. We start with Spongebob referencing giving Gary a Krabby Patty, to which Mr. Krabs is surprised and rightfully says that they should only be fed kibble. Thank you, Mr. Krabs. Spongebob says it's a treat since tomorrow is January 1st, 2016. Spongebob brings Gary some kelp fries, who is clearly uninterested. Gary takes special note of his required bath by running in fear, as one should. Plankton drops by for a scheme for the formula and convinces Gary to go on a vacation while he disguises himself as Gary. Spongebob then shows his best traits as an owner. He gets shower gel in Plankton's mouth and scrapes him against his head. Spongebob takes him to the pet hospital, Plankton gets tested for only what I can presume are snail STDs and screams in pain the whole time. We then get my favorite image of the episode. Beautiful. The snail hospital then just tells him Plankton is going to die. Gary shows back up and kills Plankton. Gary is then hired as a bouncer, episode over. At least this one shows that Spongebob tries to care for Gary, or at least what he presumes is Gary. Fun fact, I could have used Season 8's Frozen Face-Off as another example of Gary abuse. But you know what? I think the Gary getting abuse train of this video is just... The arc is... It's done. Here we are. The big one. If you've ever watched any Spongebob content on YouTube back around the 2010s, chances are you've heard of this infamous episode. Spongebob needs a pet sitter for Gary since he is visiting his grandma. He goes to Patrick. Pat drops Gary during the conversation. Spongebob makes Pat an entire list on what to do, and he throws it away. He has not fed Gary for an entire afternoon. Pat then eats Gary's entire food bag. Gary is crying out in hunger. Nobody is taking him seriously. Over a phone call, Spongebob foolishly tells Pat to give Gary a bath. He again teases Gary with food. Gary finally fights back and tries to flee Pat, but with little success. Now it's bath time, oh boy. Plankton w Plankton? What? Patrick walks up with a flamethrower. The starfish is going to cook this snail. Pat then hoses Gary down in a kinda uncomfortable scene with Gary's cries of pain. Pat dries off Gary, and now has destroyed Spongebob's entire pineapple. Spongebob gets home and Gary and Pat are reading stories. End of the episode. This, this one sucks. I think I'd rather go back to pineapple fever at this point, not gonna lie. Season 8, House Sitting for Sandy. Spongebob talks about breakfast with Gary but doesn't actually feed him and it isn't brought up. Season 8, Home Sweet Rubble. Spongebob repeatedly ignores Gary's pleas for food. Season 8, in Spongiac. Gary is seen snacking on snail nibbles. Season 8, Treats. Spongebob sees an advertisement for snail bites, which kinda look good, not gonna lie. Gary gets addicted and goes crazy wanting them. Spongebob goes to the end of the world but eventually just has to learn to tell Gary no. Honestly, not even a bad episode and actually puts Gary in a pretty antagonistic role. Nice role reversal. Season 9, Patrick Man. Spongebob feeds Gary in the first 10 seconds. I bought the entire episode in high definition on YouTube to show you this clip. For $3, you get probably about 7 seconds of b-roll. 
Hope it's worth it. Season 9, Gary's New Toy. Doesn't really feature any food, just thought it was noteworthy over how we have a flipped Have You Seen This Snail, with Gary now obsessed over something stupid. Season 9, Little Yellow Book, Squidward yells at Gary, who just bites him. Season 9, Bumper to Bumper, Gary won't shut up about food. Season 9, Evil Spatula, Spongebob's new spatula, controlled by Plankton, feeds Gary. Season 9, Spongebob, you're fired. Spongebob gets depressed, much like myself, after having to watch so many of these mediocre episodes for 10 second clips. He sluggishly feeds Gary. Season 9, Larry's Gym. In a flashback, Spongebob struggles to lift up some organic snail food. Season 9, Lame and Fortune. Spongebob and Gary meet some fortune cookies. Season 9, Pineapple Invasion. Gary, using his superb bouncer skills from before, defends Spongebob's house from Plankton. Again, we get to see Gary go on the offensive. And now, with us out of Season 9, we are officially out of the Dark Ages. Also, we get to skip the entirety of Season 10. I've basically never seen any of these newer episodes, so it's gonna be both a Gary Gluttony research and also kinda just a nice little review slash retrospective. Starting us in, The Modern Age. Season 11, no pictures please. Uh, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the crazy animation. Feels a little bit too over-exaggerated, but man, everybody's basically made this opinion, so, oh well. Patrick takes a fish on a tour guide to Bikini Bottom and stops for a lunch break. He appropriately raids Spongebob's fridge and Gary is seen eating as well. Side note, I already like how the jokes are improving. They're also at a rapid fire pace thanks to the new season. Season 11, Cuddle E Hugs. Spongebob eats a rotten Krabby Patty and starts to see a hamster who talks with him. Gary, at this point of sane mind, recognizes just the absolute insanity and ludicrousness of Spongebob, and is promptly disgusted. Season 11, Chatterbox Gary. This episode doesn't really feature food, but it provides a lot of insight into this. Gary gets a new collar that allows him to speak with the majestic voice of Keith David. He dreams about raining fire on his enemies, pretty in line with his character. He is friendly to Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy, so maybe he's made up for what happened in the previous episodes. Honestly, overall, this is actually just a really enjoyable episode. I can gladly say I recommend it. Go watch it! Season 12, Gary and Spot. Gary and Spot, Plankton's new pet from a few seasons ago, get into hijinks around Bikini Bottom. They wind up eating trash and a lot of Krusty Krab food. Season 12, Gary's Got Legs. After going through a gym routine, Punchbob gives Gary some limbs. Gary eats food at some point, but honestly, it wasn't too bad. I kinda like this episode. Season 12, King Plankton. Plankton comes to rule some sea chimps, and at one point, Spongebob makes a remark that Gary has been trying to eat them. In actually a kinda shocking twist, Patrick is revealed to be the consumer of the monkeys, further driving home my point that he is the real antagonist of this series. I also really love this episode purely because of... You know that child we were planning on having? Let's, Let's forget, forget it. it! Season 12, There Will Be Grease. In one of the most mid and mediocre episodes I have ever seen, Plankton and Krabs fight over Grease and how to sell it. Spongebob references how he feeds it to Gary, and also eats it. And that's it! At the moment of writing, no more episodes have primarily featured Gary Wilson Jr. with food, and I skipped over a few, but there are just so many that are just minor in scope compared to everything. Final rundown? Spongebob, terrible pet owner. Squidward, petty guy but doesn't wish true harm on Gary. Patrick, the Antichrist. And so conclusively, out of all these episodes I have watched and suffered through for your entertainment, can we confirm that Gary represents the sin of gluttony? No. While he may be chowing down a lot, there are also multiple episodes where he just does other stuff. I can confirm, after many hours of this awful project, Gary is not gluttony. I don't know where you people even get this idea. It truly makes no sense. If you subscribe to this theory, you're just insane. I don't know where you even get the foundations for this kind of garbage theory. I'm glad I can sleep safely at night knowing this true intent of Gary's character wasn't just some stupid fan-created Seven Deadly Sins theory. That's what's fun about his character and all these characters being connected with the seven deadly sins, you know, which Steve wanted as a as a theme for this show. Did he really? Yeah, that was wow. it. Each as character, for the whole series, the seven deadly sins. The, each character represented a one of the sure, seven well, deadly which sins. Which one am I? Am I? Uh... You're karate. What, what else? Be? Karate is the eighth deadly sin. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's very deadly. 
No, I'm not. I'm actually not sure which ones, but I know that was the that was the idea. Oh.